All right. So next I prepared a couple of challenges for you to work on to really get more familiar and get a better understanding of what I explained in the slides and in the example in the playground. And all of these challenges you're going to be working on inside of a playground. So if you download um, the, um, the current folder for today's lesson, you get access to this playground. It has seven pages, um, six of which are challenges and one example um, where I have uh, a sample solution for a challenge so that you know uh, what to do. And I'm also going to code this example right now so that you have a reference point and a couple of explanations as to what to do. So first, let's take a look at the general pattern of each of these uh, challenges. So here I define a canvas, uh, which is basically just a UI view. And the size of the canvas is going to uh, vary depending on the task that you're doing. Um, and I show the canvas in the live view of the playground just as we did before, so I can display it here on the right in the assistant editor. All right, let's take a look at the task. Add two UI views to the canvas. The positioning and size of the two views have the following requirements. The blue view should have a margin of 20 points, each to the leading, top, and to the bottom edge. Its width should further be half the width of the canvas. The green view has no margin to the trailing edge. It should further be square and its width should be half the width of the blue view. And on the y-axis, it should have the same center as blue. So these requirements are enough for me to um, create the um, frames of these two views and add them to the canvas. And also note that um, we are going to um, do this challenge in two different ways. So the first um, way is by implementing the above task by setting the views frames directly. That's what we're going to do today. And then after we talked about um, auto layout, um, you are going to do the same challenges, uh, but by defining auto layout constraints programmatically. Um, and when you're working on the second challenge, make sure to comment out the first implementation um, once you start working on the second one to avoid any conflicts and confusion. All right, so let's dive right in. And let's start with the first task. So um, at first, I want to create a variable that re represents the margin that I specified. So it's going to be the margin, um, and it'll be of uh, 20 points, right? We have the margin to the top, the bottom, to the left, and the right. So let's just save this in, in one variable that we can uh, refer to later on. All right, so um, basically, we already know now that um, the um, x and the y um, are going to be the same values as the margin because that uh, x and y basically define the distances from the left and from the top. So we can just assign them the margin. And I'm actually going to use blue as a prefix because we are working with the blue view. So blue x is going to be uh, margin and blue y also will be the value of margin. <clears throat> All right, now that we've got x and y, we need to take care of the width and the height. And the width was supposed to be half this, the width of the canvas. So what we can do, we can say blue width, and that's going to be half the size of the canvas. So we can just refer to the canvas. We take its frame property, we refer to the size, then to its width, and we multiply this with 0 0.5 so, so that we get the width, uh, half the width of it. All right, so next we've got the height. And here it's now important to also consider that we need to include the bottom margin, right? We need to in include um, a margin of 20 points to the bottom as well. So what we can infer from this basically is that the height of the blue view is going to be the height of the canvas minus the top margin, minus the bottom margin. So let's just type this out. Blue height, oh, sorry here, typos. Blue height is going to be canvas.frame.size.height minus margin, minus margin. All right, I'm now at the point where I can create the frame. So I'm just going to make it like this to go through every step in detail. Blue frame is going to be CG rect, and 
and let's provide these values. We've got uh, blue x, blue y, blue width, blue height. And in fact, because um, the canvas uh, frame size height is actually uh, of type CG float, and we cannot uh, do mathematical operations with CG float and integers, we have to cast it or convert it to an integer by using the integers initializer uh, right here. And um, I must have made another typo somewhere. Yeah, so we only need one closing parenthesis here. And the blue width actually also uh, currently is a CG float because again, the width is a CG float and we're multiplying it with 0 0.5, so the result will be CG float. So we're ca casting this to an int as well. And now the compiler should be happy. So I just made a typo, so I don't know why this happened, but let's just accept this and make the compiler happy here. All right, so now I can actually go and create the view. So let's do that. Blue view, it's gonna be a UI view. I'm using the views initializer and providing the frame that I just defined. So that's the blue frame. And now I can go and add this view to the canvas as a subview. Blue view. All right, let's wait a second for the assistant editor to display the results. In fact, I forgot one important thing because right now we won't see anything because by default, the background color of a view is white. So I still need to go and set this background color to blue. There we go, we've got our view and it looks very similar to what we've got in the picture here. Let's now take care of the green view. So let's first consider that it has no margin to the trailing edge, it should further be square and its width should be half the width of the blue view and on the y-axis it should have the same center as blue. All right, so let's start with the width because there we have very clear instructions. So green width should be half the size of the, um, uh, the, the blue view, so, or half the width of the blue view. So let's refer to the blue view, its frame, its size, and its width. And in the same way as we did it before, we're gonna multiply with 0 0.5 so that we get it um, as uh, or so that we calculate the um, half the width of the blue view. Now we've got the width. Let's now uh, go and define the height. And because we know that the green view should be a square, we can infer that the height has to be the same as the width. So when we're defining the height, we're just going to assign it the width as well. So next, the x value and that's a little bit tricky because we don't have too much information but we can actually infer what this should be so it says that the um the green view has no margin to the trailing edge and that really means that this x value so this value where we position uh, the green view in the end is actually the width of the canvas minus the width of the green view. And we already know the width of the green view. So what we can do is we just define the X value in terms of that. We say canvas dot frame dot size dot width minus green width. All right. Okay. And then for the Y value, we had the requirement that on the Y axis, the green view should have the same center as blue. And the way how we do this is just by um, assigning the center. Uh, we're actually going to do this a bit later on. Let's first add the green view, uh, create the green view and add it to the canvas as well. So here is my green view. Again, I'm using the initializer of the UI view that has taken a frame. And because I haven't defined the frame yet, let me do that first. Let green frame is going to be a CG rect again. Um, using the int, the initializer that takes a number of ints. So zero, um, 
that's for the x value because we haven't defined that yet. Um, ah, sorry, we have defined the x value but not the y value, so let's only enter a zero for now. Then we've got the width, which is the green width, and then the green height, of course. And I believe I have to convert these to integers again so that the compiler is happy with my types. So let's create the view based on this. Let's give it its background color. And we are adding it to the canvas. All right. So we see that the green view has been added to the canvas, but on the y-axis, it's not yet properly positioned because it needs to be positioned on the center, on the same center as um, the blue view. And we can easily achieve this by assigning the center of the green view to the same value as the center of the blue view. Um, but this is actually not 100% true because now it took the exact same center point when we actually only want to take the center of the y. So let's make sure that this is the case by uh, referring to the y property of the center. And now we recreate it the same picture as we see here. So that's going to be the pattern that you're using throughout all these challenges. You've got a canvas that is defined. You've got... Um, a couple of requirements for what the view should look like and then a picture of what the view should look like in the end. And um, that's what you can work on for today. Mitchell is going to support you and will answer any questions you might have.